Welcome to our channel. Volali Bell Lady Zebras stay hot, though 7-0 at Claremore crossover. Derek Jackson didn't delve too deeply into his thoughts on Claremore's performance at the Claremore crossover over the weekend. He kept it simple, focusing on the only thing that mattered, the Lady Zebras played really well. Claremore dominated its second home tournament of the season, going 7-0 while dropping only one of 15 sets. The Class 5 a no. Three Lady Zebras swept through their competition, defeating Midwest City, 25-19, 25-10, 5-0. 10-Klassen SAS, 25-16, 25-18. Uloga, 25-16, 25-16. Locust Grove, 25-16, 25-5. Gaiman, 25-13, 25-12. And 5-0. Nine Kawita, 25 to 19, 25 to 19. Their lone blemish came against Wright Christian, where they dropped a set in a two to one victory, 25 to eight, 21 to 25, 15 to six. October's kind of on our mind, even when we're playing a team that maybe isn't the greatest, Jackson said. We're trying to kind of fight with ourselves in terms of how efficient can we play. Can we not dip down and play at our level on a consistent basis? We're playing well though. We didn't really play down at any moment against anybody this weekend. The second set against Wright Christian was the only little small hiccup where I thought we could have played better. But everything else, we played well. I don't know if it was because it was the seniors' last tournament, but it was good to see them play as well as they played. Ella Ramsey, Claire Hardage, and Grace Bauman were key contributors throughout the tournament and earned spots on the all tournament team. Ramsey put up an impressive 68 kills, 8 aces, 2 block assists, 79 assists, and 37 digs. Hardage tallied 45 kills, 9 aces, 5 block assists, and 7 digs, while Bauman contributed with 9 kills, 7 aces, 1 block, 5 block assists, 79 assists, and 23 digs. Addie Doyle also stood out with 27 kills, 1 block, 5 block assists, and 4 assists, providing a consistent offensive presence for Claremore. Meanwhile, May Stagner's spear added 9 aces, 1 kill, 52 assists, and 12 digs. Defensively, Marley White led the way from the service line with 10 aces and 30 digs, while Dashia Bittner anchored the back row with a team-high 43 digs, 5 aces, and 10 assists. Addie and Dashia played really well again, Jackson said, Addie was not eye-popping in terms of stats, but some of her kills were pretty eye-popping. On the season she's hitting a 161, and for the tournament, it was a 333, so she almost was double efficient this entire weekend. She did really well, and Dashia really handled the back row pretty darn well. And then Eva Bodhi, she only had a handful of kills but really put up a good block. She had zero errors. It was just one of those things quietly helping us in the background that you don't really notice until you kind of dissected a little of how important she was. Those three, on top of our all-tournament players, all did really well. The Lady Zebras continued their winning ways, sweeping Westville on Monday. The Lady Zebras played East Central on Tuesday for senior night after press time and will now turn their attention to Class 6 a no. 5 Awaso on Thursday for their final match before the rankings are updated next week. As the post season looms, Jackson hopes the tough road test at Awaso won't impact Claremore's standing too much, aiming to stay at no. 3 in 5A and solidify hosting a regional. Regardless of the outcome, Jackson remains confident in his team's ability to make a strong case for a higher ranking, especially with its dominant performance at the Claremore crossover. Going to an Owasso team on the road at their place for their senior night, I'm sure we're going to get a crowd, and I'm sure we're going to get their best, Jackson said. That's what we signed up for, so I look forward to it. We're not worried about the rankings too much because I think we're pretty much solidified in hosting a regional, but I do think it'll help us when we re-rank, if we can make it to state, if we can win. Then I think that helps our case to be even higher, 